Hey, welcome back! Time for five more DM Quick Tips. Now, these are the tips that I have learned running and playing games over the last 40 years. Uh, this is the sixth video of an ongoing series of tips, and I'll go ahead and link the full playlist down in the description below. Now, while my tips are geared towards advanced Dungeons & Dragons, many of them should be useful no matter which version you're playing. But uh, tip number one. If you have never ran a game before as a DM but want to, then try out a one-shot or a limited range of adventures. If you already have a group that you game with on a regular basis, you know, the DM would likely be happy to take a bit of a break and let somebody else run the game for a session or two. Just talk to them, you know, otherwise, you can always go onto a virtual tabletop like Roll20 and just post that you're looking for players. Make sure to spell out in the description that it's a limited run game only so people don't get excited for a long campaign. But tip number two is I have been playing on Roll20 myself for several years now, and you know, I've ran several different events on it and several different games on it. According to the stats, I've actually played with over a hundred people across 40 different games, so I'd say I've played it out a little bit. Several of the games I've played in have been with the same people, but many, many of them were just a limited session game, kind of like I described. So my tip is, if you haven't already checked out Virtual Tabletops, um, check them out. Um, if you're willing to run a game, you will have no problem at all finding players. Have you already tried out a Virtual Tabletop before? What'd you think about it? What was good about it? What was bad about it? You know, the real problem that will crop up when you decide to run a game is going to be lack of time. It's tempting to draw maps, create a world history with dozens of NPCs all ready to go, and I will advise any inspiring DM out there to temper themselves a little bit because you don't know the direction of the game. Even a limited game is going to change in a direction you're not expecting. So, hence the recommendation for a limited number of games, and either limit yourself to a small section of a published adventure, especially if you're playing at one of those new 5e mega adventures, you know, the rebirth of the mega dungeon. Um, instead, create a small scope. Take a small, if you're playing 5e, take a small chunk of that. If you're playing 1e, 2e, whatever, just take a small chunk of, of a published adventure or a small scope of what you're going to hope to accomplish in your adventure. Have a clear goal in mind, such as clear all the monsters from the Haunted Mansion, or take the princess to a neighboring kingdom, or take the apples into the market, you know, whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, just get your feet wet, and without, you know, don't overwhelm yourself when you're, when you're doing that. I say this because transitioning from a player to a DM is actually a bit of a challenge. You stop being the hero but you aren't quite the villain either. So instead, you try to create a challenging world that's interesting enough for you, but not so difficult that it frustrates your players. You know, knowing your players is important too. Granted, if you're on one of those virtual tabletops, you might not know them very well. That's why setting up those expectations at the beginning is so important, especially in a limited run scope. Uh, whichever route you take though, make sure the adventure is your own. I know I say this all the time, but don't be afraid to make any changes you want to a published adventure. You are not a computer running a program. Instead, you are a person playing a game. Frankly, you will get out of your adventure what you put into it. Just don't over plan, because that becomes a waste of time too. You know, it's certainly a balancing act. Finally, I want to say thanks for the comments on the maps I've been drawing and on these videos and on my other videos. I just want to say thanks for all those comments. Uh, regarding the maps, I'm trying to improve my skills when it comes to creating them. Uh, I've done a lot of regular 2D flat maps, so the 3D maps are definitely something that's uh, a new skill for me a little bit that I'm trying to develop and to polish. Now, I've been challenged, my son has actually challenged me, to somehow start to link these together. So we'll see how that goes, no promises. But if anybody has any tips or ideas for these, please leave me a comment. Well, thanks for taking a look. What quick tips would you add? Please let me know down in the comments below. Otherwise, catch you next time. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please give a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Catch you next time. Bye.